I'm going to call to order the Board of Aldermen regular meeting for today, which is Thursday, September 3rd. We've got quite a bit of an agenda here, so we're going to try and be very organized as we go through this. Um, so what I'll start with is a request for an approval on the agenda. I'm sorry, Susan, I missed That's you. Yes, please. Quite all right. Please stand for the invitation. Bless this town and may it remain a beautiful and friendly place to live. We, we pray that this board makes fair and informed decisions tonight. We also pray that our police officers, firefighters, and members of our armed services here and around the world remain safe as they risk so much for our security. We also pray that our town be spared the ravages of hurricanes and other natural disasters and that everyone associated with the town remain safe and secure. Amen. Amen. Okay, now I'll ask for approval of the agenda. I want to add an item to it. Yes, sir. Uh, just a personnel issue to go in under closed session. Okay. I'd like to see us add in the uh, open forum a portion once uh, once everything has been read, uh, the emails that we've received uh, regarding uh, the total project, I'd like to add board member feedback. If that's appropriate to call it that, I think we know what we're talking about. Okay. okay. Board discussion, I board think. Board discussion about would okay. be fine. Yeah. Okay. And are there any other requests? Uh, I would also like to amend the agenda to add a continuing business item. That would be the revetment update. The continuing business. We do not have any continuing business items. No. Just gonna say, uh, I was going to say, you're trying to so we're going to add answer. that section, continuing business, and under that section, there will be a revetment <laughs> update for myself. So put that um, after new business, continuing business? No, no, business? before. The fourth business. Madam Mayor, um, with respect to the closed session, uh, a second reason to go into closed session would be to preserve the attorney client privilege uh, so I can provide some legal advice on a contract issue that has arisen since our last uh, meeting. Okay. Potential contract issue. Okay, so we have a few requested changes to the agenda. Do we have a motion? I make a motion we approve with the changes as specified. Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, then with that, we're going to move into the manager's report. And I want to start by saying, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Mr. Gilbright, I'm glad that you're feeling well and that you're, you're here with us. So I'm hopeful that you have a short report because you weren't supposed to be working. Um, and I'll, uh, thank you to the board for putting up with my health issues. and. Uh, Hopefully everything will be back to normal by next week and I'll have a decent report for you at our next meeting. Uh, for now, just to hit the treetops really quickly, the, uh, one of the issues that's uh, uh, foremost is the renovation of the town hall. Uh, at this point, uh, all of the drawings have been reconciled between the uh, uh, HVAC engineers and the uh, construction people. Um, the uh, next week or during next week, they will be preparing the uh, bid advertisements uh, the following week, we will actually advertise for bids. Uh, by the uh, 15th or so, or the 16th, we'll have the, uh, uh, all the documents available for the contractors to take a look at, and the drawings will be at our inspections department for Jimmy to just go over and make sure we haven't uh, goofed anything up. Uh, and then on, by October the 13th, we intend to have the bid opening. Uh, uh, shortly thereafter, I would hope that we can uh, approve the contractor and get started. <clears throat> The architect is uh, forecasting six months of construction, uh, which I think is extreme. Uh, it should be a heck of a lot less than that. So I would think worst case is sometime in March, uh, we'll be able to re-inhabit the town hall. Uh, other issues on the, uh, 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 
I believe what Mr. Eads was referring to, we had another bid uh, out for uh, the truck haul for the Florence and the Dorian Sand. Uh, there's some minor irregularities in that, and I think that's what we'll be uh, discussing as will Mr. Way. Uh, you may have noticed riding by that the, uh, the uh, preparations of the county uh, beach <laughs> access for, uh, they flattened the dune completely and uh, 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 allowed for basically any overwash to just come directly through with no uh, impedance whatsoever. I contacted both the county manager and assistant manager today and they assured me that that was not their intent and that they will take care of it. Uh, we don't have any name storms currently active and nothing likely to form in the next five days or so. There's one we're keeping an eye on, it's just off the west coast of Africa. Um, so we have some time for them to get that straightened out and we'll keep an eye on it. And, uh, uh, you know, I kind of made clear to them that if they did not fix it, that you know, if we had to, we would fix it. So, did they just put it in that parking lot? Is that what they did? I they don't know what they did. They, uh, Scott, do you know what they are? <laughs> uh, it looked like they just bulldozed it flat, kind of out towards the yeah, right out towards the beach. Like, right? yeah. The parking lot looks like it's, it's the gravel that they laid down. Yeah, yeah. The gravel. I, I, I just couldn't figure out why on earth. I no idea. That I mean, they, I stopped by there four times and they told me that that thing was going to be done in the middle of August. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The question I have about that is my observation was they've got the stairs to access the bathhouse from the parking lot, but I'll be darned if I can see from the road where the stairs is going to go down to access the beach from the bathhouse because there should be a dune we're talking about right. between the beach access stairs and the parking lot access Maybe that's stairs. So I think that needs to be uh, looked at closely. And I think there might be a camera issue there if they don't put an access from the bathhouse down to the beach that's separate. Because yeah. otherwise, right. there won't be a dune be, we are sure. talking about being restored there. Right. I would right. assume it's a camera issue that they destroyed the dune that was there. Right. And, and just to just support what, what uh, Mike had just said is, when you look at it right now, to your point, it looks like the access to the beach is just going to be a walk under the thing to go out there and that's all they've got right now I mean, they've got the <coughs> stairs that go up that he was talking about they're really nice but there's nothing on the other side to go back out to the beach okay well mr gilbride if you yeah, could just we'll keep see. us updated on that i appreciate that okay um, walk by there every day and uh, can do a camera deb will be preparing a major permit uh, application to camera for the expansion of the jeffrey's parking lots uh, so because we'd like to get that done as soon as we can this winter and, and move toward the uh, uh, our, our parking issues getting resolved. Uh, the only issue is like the, on the shoreline protection uh, personnel issue. I'd like to be able to talk to that during the uh, closed session if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing I don't know if I've updated the board on, on that is an option for us in um, Chief's search for space. Um, Mrs. Parker said that she'd be willing to allow us to continue to rent that current building if we would like to do so after we get back into town hall. So that is at least one option because we've been having some trouble trying to find some extra space for PD and it doesn't um, negatively impact. I don't think the, the capital planning that we're doing because it's a rental and so it's just an option right now. I don't think we have to make any decisions. She's just offered that to us. Okay. Can I, can I just ask a question maybe Brian could ask? Answer this one. The chief has brought this up before that one of the differences is if it's town property, okay, then you're allowed to enforce things. But if it's not, if we got some kind of undivided interest in that property, is you know, like even a temporary thing, would, would something like that work? You see what I'm saying? It's like if you do we have to own 100% of it, or if we are an owner of the property, are we allowed to do it? Because you know, during the lease, you can set up something that you've got an undivided interest in it that's one percent. I don't think we want to, but you couldn't do it. Your 1% wouldn't trump the other's property rights. In other words, just because we're a municipality wouldn't in and of itself trump your traditional property rights. No, but I'm talking more about his ability to enforce, To he can't make an arrest of that because we don't know. At it. town hall. At town hall. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, my, uh, my question is the police department is at town hall. You don't normally arrest people in town hall, do you? Well, if the, it depends. <laughs> if somebody came in there and started tearing up the town hall, we could detain them until the sheriff's office got there, where yeah. the town hall is now. 
Okay. I'm sorry, and Mike, I, I, I didn't make myself clear. I, I thought we were talking about once we moved everything into the right to the new town hall, if he's using that for storage or other places for the police department. I think it, my understanding, and I'll, Chief, you could certainly jump in, is maybe a bit of a mix. So he would still be using his right. PD space over here at the new right. town hall, but it's just not large enough. Right. So he may be able to utilize the space we have as well for some stores, some evidence, maybe detectives, whatever. Detectives or something like that. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be like open to the public. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you, you could always enter into a, a mutual aid agreement as well. That, and we do have one okay but but that you would be the first responder with all Pacific. right um but i don't think our ownership interest at all whether it was 100 percent would necessarily give you jurisdiction where you didn't otherwise have it for law enforcement services okay but and again it's not something the board needs to no. take any decision or making um action on tonight i really just wanted everybody to know that it's an option okay um i'm going to ask um our clerk miss oxley if she could please describe for us Sorry, could just somebody just sent an email into us saying that they can't get onto the what they can't get in it's uh this is miss bing i'm trying to get the meeting by clicking on the link at the ntv website there's no access to, to tonight's meeting it's not on it's on, the, it's on the website right it, it's both on um it should be broadcasting live to the Facebook down to the town's website, but it's also on YouTube and it's also on uh, Facebook. If, and if she has access to Facebook, India posted the link. Okay. Um, so if she gets onto the town's Facebook page, she'll be able to find the link. Sure. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Deb, can you check and see if we have other folks online? I'm just wondering if she's the only one having trouble getting on. Can you see the number of people or no? Is there's like 28 people that are the last time I checked that are watching you okay. the YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, but we have Fran Ray and, and Doug Carter and uh, I think it was Andrew Carter. Mm -hmm. I don't see Andrew Carter on the Zoom though. Okay, I'm sorry. Just, we just literally got an email from someone. Who's no, I appreciate you saying that. It sounds like other folks are able to get in, so hopefully we'll okay. be able to get that figured out. Okay. Um, so again, we've had such a tremendous um, reaction to our request for feedback that uh, we've gone. A little bit different of a process to try and make sure we've got it gathered all up we've got it to all the board members got it um uploaded i'm going to have miss oxley go through that and i did want to thank everybody before we go through this process just for all of the feedback that had come in i was a little bit disappointed honestly that the feedback started by just assuming we were against the federal project because that was not the reason that we sent out all the information this is a new board and our desire is to be able to share as much information as we can with the residents and the citizens here in North Topsail Beach. We've got a lot of capital planning for projects that we're trying to accomplish here as a board and we're really just trying to be open and honest. So again, I, as well as the board, greatly appreciate all the feedback that we've, we've gotten, but I want everybody to understand we didn't send it out because we had decided against the project. We as a board are very much for the project. We are trying to figure out financially the best way to be able to afford it. That's really the problem. And we'll go through that in more detail. So we're going to do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Oxley. And then what we'll do is we'll go around to the different board members and provide some discussion points on all the feedback that we've gotten in. Is that okay? Sure. Thank you. Um, Mayor, as, as you know, the board called for two sets of public comments um, for this meeting. Um, the first round was specifically asking for comments about the federal project. Um, we anticipated a lot of comments and we did receive a lot of comments, uh, say approximately 100 emails. Um, those came to my account and period periodically I would bundle those and send them to the board. So the board started seeing those last week. Um, and then the board also directed staff and worked with staff to establish frequently asked questions so that we could get a lot more information out. Um, for efficiency, uh, instead of reading all of those emails, we have uploaded them to the website so that they're available for public review. Um, and then we did a second call for comments, which we do now that we're in the age of COVID. We have, uh, we have uh, our, our meetings are uh, virtual. Uh, of that bundle, there were only two people that specifically 
ask that their comments would be read at the tonight's meeting. Um, and again, this call for comments didn't necessarily request any federal project um, subject matter, uh, but they were requested to be read. So uh, the first of the two emails is from Miss Becky Dixon of 113 Barton Bay Court. <coughs> Ms. Dixon writes, we are highly opposed to participating in the North Topsail Beach slash Surf City federal project. Our fire and rescue buildings, law enforcement department, and town hall have been neglected in many, many ways. While the North End Fire Station needs some repairs and attention, the South End Fire Station is a disgrace to this town and those who have ignored or neglected to prioritize the upkeep and maintenance to make it a safe, healthy workplace. Everyone, taxpayers included, should stop by and take a tour of what our dedicated fire and rescue professionals have to live with when they come to work. <coughs> Not one resident of North Topsail Beach would live with the current conditions that these professionals live with when they are out on duty for our residents. The I-beam support structure and the metal facade are rusted and rotted completely through. When sleeping, if it rains, the roof leaks and there's a rush to find buckets after the bedding is already wet. This is an embarrassment to our town. Law enforcement, what can we say? To expect our law enforcement officers, admin and chief to work in a closet sized space with not enough uh, secure safe area to keep all the records and evidence protected is another area of neglect when examining the needs of our law enforcement professionals. We have hired professionals in law enforcement and it is about time to provide them with the space and secure storage area that they deserve and need to adequately and professionally do their job. To utilize the plans of other public safety buildings and build North Topsail Beach public safety building is a need and well past any further discussion or delay. Taxpayer dollars were spent on attempting to learn how to retain employees. Isn't it obvious? Competitive pay, competitive benefits, and a healthy, safe work environment. Rotted buildings, fire and rescue, inadequate space to move around, law enforcement, and no secure or adequate space for records evidence do not represent a desirable working environment. It is time to listen to our fire chief and our police chief. North Topsail Beach has hired true professionals in these men. And it's about time to provide a safe, healthy, professional space in which they can work and protect and provide services to the residents of North Topsail Beach. Our town hall was underinsured. Isn't it ridiculous that two years after Hurricane Florence, our town hall is still a shell of a building? It is well past time for town hall to be back home on the island, period. Hopefully when the town hall eventually gets repaired, someone will make it a priority to check the insurance and make sure that it is a repair or replace policy that reflects the true value and cost of replacement. Again, the fact that two years after Florence hit our town hall is still uninhabitable and an eyesore for our community is ridiculous. Forget locking us to an extremely long, expensive commitment for sand, figure out how Topsail Beach did it without participating in the federal program and look at those types of options. <coughs> Build a public safety building that we can be proud of that meets our needs for future fire and law enforcement professionals. Make necessary repairs to our North End Fire Station and our public works building. Get our town hall repaired. Our building structures have been ignored for far, for far too long. Get it done. Um, Mayor, the, the second and the final email um, is from Mr. Phil Fowler. Fowler. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the board. Perception is reality. No matter how good yesterday was, today is all we've got. You're voting on perhaps one of the more important issues for North Topsail Beach. Do we make history or do we become a footnote to Topsail Island? A positive outcome for this unprecedented project fortifies the safety and well-being of our citizens and communities while demonstrating NTB's commitment to the long-term wellness of the island. NTB is in the birth pangs of something new, and right now it's fully uncertainty and it's full of uncertainty and confusion. You are the benefactors of the division slash descent fostered by your predecessors. There is no North End or South End, no we versus they, only one NTB. You can make a difference. The first step in this new epic journey rests in your hands via tonight's vote. It'll take great vision, strong hearts, and determination to move the town forward. When you were sworn into office, you obligated yourself to represent the people. Don't squander this opportunity. Vote in favor of the federal project. Thank you. Yeah. And again, all of those other emails that you've received are yes, on the website. Is that where people can find them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So before I, before I turn it over to all the board members, I just want to hit just a few bullet points. And I think you'll hear it as a common theme because I do believe we as a board are working very well together along 
with those who are giving us advice and our partners through this process as we try to determine how to move forward. The main issue that we struggle with as a board is that the fact that we did a project in 2014 that we're still paying for now. We do have a USDA obligation on that. So we're trying to figure out how do how is best to bring in new revenue to cover not just this project, but as Ms. Dixon had mentioned, and as you've heard the other aldermen report out the other capital projects that we need to, we need to be saving money for. We, we've just got a lot that we've got to get accomplished here. It's been too long. We are exploring all financial options together. Mr. Carter will be going through that, but nothing is off the table as far as trying to figure out how to be able to afford everything we need to accomplish in our small town. And the only comment I really wanted to address is there was there were several comments that came in that specifically said we should be talking to Surf City or we should be talking to the core. We are. We are meeting with them on at least a weekly basis. We are staying in sync. We are all working together trying to do this, this project planning that needs to get done. North Topsail Beach is not working in a vacuum to get by ourselves trying to figure this out. So with that, I'm going to turn it over and let each alderman be able to respond to the feedback that we've been getting. And I'm going to start with Alderman Leonard. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, like everybody else, I read all the emails. Uh, I went through trying to prepare for today after reading them again. And I actually sat down and I wrote some notes up. So I'm going to, if it looks like I'm reading, it's because I am. Because I want to, <laughs> I want to make sure I don't miss anything. And hopefully my eyesight's good enough that I can catch it all. Well, I got my contacts in, but we'll see how well they work. First thing is, you know, I read them all. There seems there are many emails from several individuals, essentially the same email that went through some sort of a cycle and was just resent by different persons down to even having the same words in capital letters. You know, I mean, I get all that. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Um, I want to make sure that everyone understands the board has not said no to the project not by any means, but is instead wrestling with how to pay for a very expensive project. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, we're trying, trying to do this and do it right. I would remind everyone it's already stressful enough trying try to come up with the right, right decision. And, you know, for those citizens who, who want to weigh in, you know, please try to help us instead of just really criticizing. Um, I got thick skin. I was a Marine for 30 years, three months and 10 days. I've given some great ash tunes and I've taken some too. So you're not going to hurt my feelings, but, but, but give us something to work with. Give us something to work with. And I'll thank you in advance uh, for your future cooperation. The one thing that stuck out with me as I read through everything was how only one writer, one writer mentioned the previously completed phase five shoreline protection project that was completed back in 2014, 15, which is, was done in exactly the same area of town where the federal project will be constructed. It was a little disappointing to me that residents of that area who wrote didn't at least recognize that the town has already spent $16 million in that area to protect the shoreline. There. We embarked upon the phase five project, and I think people from the core seated behind me will agree to this. But we embarked upon that project because at the time there was no real idea when the federal project would be approved. Um, it had been on the books for several years, but there had been no new federal project starts for many, many years. And as a result of that, uh, we felt that it was, it was imperative to move forward uh, because at that time we had no idea when the federal project would come to fruition and when a new start would be likely. So the one person who did mention the 2014 project referred to it as, in one word, a disaster, okay? I believe that assessment is completely incorrect. The main purpose from my perspective behind conducting a beach project is shoreline protection, or as I believe the Corps of Engineers calls it, coastal storm reduction. Enhancing the shoreline is done to protect homes, roads, utilities, and other infrastructure that exists behind the dune line. The nice wide recreational beach that we enjoy in many ways is a byproduct of the shoreline protection component of a beach project. <clears throat> what was engineered and built in 2014-15 protected the shoreline in that part of the town 
during three subsequent major storms. Three, Hurricane Matthew in 2016, Florence in 18, and Dorian last year. The homes and infrastructure in that area of town far, fared much better in that area than the areas immediately to the north where the project stopped. And we're talking basically north of Myrtle Drive. Okay. I know this because I was out on the beach the day after Florence passed through with the fire chief and public works director. So the project was actually anything but a disaster. It did its job by protecting the property and the infrastructure in that part of town. One of the other issues I have with, with a lot of the emails is it seems that there's absent from them a demonstration of, of an overall willingness to shoulder the bulk of the town's cost of this project. Okay. While there was much talk about finding ways to generate revenue, including a water park, t-shirt sales, requiring people to pay for permits to use the beach, which I don't think is legal in the state of North Carolina, <laughs> Property tax increase is probably what we're really looking at, and it is the proverbial elephant in the room. Mayor, I know you don't like to hear about it. The fact is we need to get all, everything out on the table and talk about what this may mean to the citizens. I'm not saying that is what it means, but I'm saying it may mean that, okay? Um, you know, currently all of the town's taxpayers are paying off the USDA note that was taken out for the phase five project. And we're all paying at the same rate. I'm not sure how fair it is to ask those outside the project area to com contribute equally to the federal project. We may have to examine some level of tiered payment or payment schedule. I'm sure that uh, Doug Carter will talk about that in his uh, in his comments. Um, you know, the one thing I'll I'll I'll, I'll end with because I think I caught that, actually two things. The first thing is I started coming to meetings in town probably back in about 2006. And we were talking about beach restoration then and federal project and non-federal project and the north end, the south end, everything in the middle. And what I learned and concluded early on was that everybody wants a nice beach, but nobody wants to pay for it. Nobody really wants to pay for it. And I think, I think that's kind of where we're stuck right now. The town and this board is by no means at the point where we're throwing in the towel with anything or anyone on this project. We're just trying to figure out how to make it work along with the, the two things that, that, that Becky Dixon mentioned, that we need a fire station, we need a police station. Um, those, those, are the, those are the things that we've, we've got to mesh in and, and build all the priorities and, and shake them and bake them and see what comes out. The last thing I want to end with is, is we received one of the nicest letters I've ever seen as an elected official, and it came from Ken, Ken <clears throat> Chestnut. And, and I, I, Mr. Chestnut, I hope you're out there. I hope you're, you're tuned in tonight. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Tom. Alderman Well, obviously Tom stole out of my thunder, but that's okay, because I, I plagiarized some of his responses. You set me up. I said it. <laughs> um, well, what I found is, again, look, looking at these things, um, I, I kind of put um, people's response into a number of number of buckets. The first bucket is, I'm pretty sure that everybody in Surf City wants us to do this project. Sure. And the emails that I've seen and the petitions that I've seen, I'm not sure anybody there because they're looking at increased costs for them. It doesn't happen. So that's nice, but frankly, that doesn't really impact my decision as an alderman to go for it. Um, the second bucket is uh, people that are saying, look, I paid for that. I'm not in that area. We're putting the sand in the same place. Why am I going to have to pay for it again? Um, and I think that's a fair thing for us to consider because it's not just this project. It'll be the next project. And apparently when the other project was done, I wasn't here, I'm not second guessing it. It was decided to spread it everywhere. And from what I understand from discussions with a number of people, including Mr. Carter, that's kind of not the way it's done. Um, and when we move down here, you know, you have things like when somebody puts in a sewer, you might have an assessment related to that. Um, and I think the other thing that, that, just to digress for a second, is the total revenues that this town has are between eight and nine million dollars a year in total. Okay, we have one-time things from FEMA, whatever. <clears throat> this project annual cost to us is two or three million dollars a year. When we first started discussing this as a board, 
My reaction to a two or three million dollar project is with a nine million dollar budget that's balanced, it's impossible to pay for it. All right. Now we're looking at other revenues. Okay. The next tranche is the group that says, let's go forward no matter what, and we can raise taxes on other people besides me. Um, we want to charge for parking, which we're already doing. But then you're right back to the same issue with parking, which is if the parking revenue comes in, should it all go to one project? Because the next project that comes in, if we can raise, and I'm, I'm making up numbers, if we can raise $100,000 on parking, and, and that's all we can raise, and it goes to this project, when well, the next project comes in, we have to double the parking fees because now we have to contribute that. <clears throat> so I think, you know, that's, and I, I would say, and Mr. Chestnut actually was one of the people, I, I shouldn't use his name, that came back and said, I understand that my property taxes might go up. He was very appreciative that he was. Of yeah. us exploring all right and, and, and i think the, the point of this is we're looking at, at everything but when you have total revenues of eight to nine million dollars and you're talking about taking this on this board the first meetings that i was part of said nobody wanted to raise taxes all right you can't make this project work with the current budget we need, new revenue. We need re new revenue yeah. and we need revenue that allows us to go forward with other projects yes. The other feedback that came back was from people that are basically in two, three, and four. They <clears throat> came back and said, yeah, put $15 million or $16 million in the south end. You put $8 million in the north end, you know, and I know the argument is they're in Cobra or whatever, but they're like, why am I not getting sand? Why am I not getting sand? And I think, you know, that that's the balance. And so I think that it comes down to that, you know, it's, as a board, we have to look at, at two things I think we're all in agreement on, and that is, what, what's the cost going to be and what revenue do we have and how should we raise it and who should pay it? Mm -hmm. The other thing to listen in the chorus here, and I'm sure they can answer this because you know, I've asked this 20 times here, not to you guys, mm -hmm. is one of the big complaints that we've gotten in this thing is how could Topsail Beach do their project for 18 million or $19 million and this is a $300 million project. Okay. And, and um, I can, actually Tom and I can speak to that. Um, because when we just went on that congressional tour, right. Topsail Beach is has a very impressive beach. They did a fantastic job, but what they're able to do is recycle the sand right. from their inlet and put it on their beach. Sure. So they're not having to they're not having to go through the whole dredge process. We can't do that as of yet because we have no hardened structure. So we as a board had determined many years ago, and I would assume you all still feel the same, that nobody wants to um, cause harm to any of the infrastructure or homes up at that inlet and try and touch the sand that's in there right now. Okay. And, and that and, may be, that may be that fair. Would, that right. sand would be enough to go through two, three, and four. Okay, but my point on something that, that was raised is that may be true, but this is 20 times the amount that they spent, okay? Mm -hmm. and. I mean, no offense to the core, you know, my grandfather was in the core, um, is not the core, not that core, that core. Not the, the real core. core. <laughs> not the real no, core. No, the real core. Oh, okay. The real core. Okay. And, and the feedback I've gotten from people is I don't want a $600 hammer. Okay. And, and that's the perception. And, and I think we need to know as a town, um, and we've asked the question is, if the project is $300 million, what are hard and soft costs? Hard costs are, and I don't have any complaint about paying for a contractor, the third party contractor, but this has been going on for 10 years. And if and I have no idea what the numbers are, I'm completely making them up. But if a third of this is soft cost, okay, and the other part is hard cost, we need to know that. And, and I find think out Mr. That's Carter will get through some of that. Okay, He's good. gonna touch on that. But anyway, so I mean, the bottom line of this thing, I would support what Tom said is, everybody's in favor of the project if it's free, or we get the feds to pay 100%, which they won't, which they shouldn't, because I think every community should, you know, if it's free, it means meaning it's meaningless, right? You, you set the value. If it's free, it's not worth anything. Um, but I think the big thing in this is we have to figure out the fair thing to do, the reasonable thing to do for the town, and understand going forward whether it's on the north end, the south end, or the middle, or it's a fire station or whatever. How are we going to? How are we going to? How are we going to pay for things? When you know, it's easy to say that a fire station everybody should pay for. It. It's not as easy to say that you know a. 16 18 million dollar cost and one part of the town should only be paid by should be paid by everybody recognizing that's the way it was done before so i mean that's the feedback i've got okay. and it's it really depends on where you are right mm -hmm. okay all right i'm gonna move, move over to Ms. meyer um i'm in agreement with you guys uh i noticed three different things happening there 
there were a couple of things that I was quite surprised about with the FAQs. One was if it's a empty lot mm -hmm. that we don't, we have to pay a hundred, yep. well, not a hundred percent. North Carolina will pay. Well, we have to. It's hundred percent. Okay, so that surprised me too. Much. Yeah, I was I was surprised about that. I understand why it makes sense, um, but the, that's something people probably didn't take into account. And um, the the other thing that I found kind of concerning was the every six years the fifty fifty match. You know how the government is, if there's not that money available, then then we're not going to get the match. So it's going to be either we don't do the project or we pay 100% of it. So it's not a given that it's all going to be taken care of. And, and, and I'm a little concerned about that. So there again, I'm concerned about the, the cash flow. Okay. All right. Alderman. Peters, did you have anything you wanted to input? Okay, thank you. Well, I, uh, I have read all of the comments and I'm extraordinarily pleased at the volume that we've received uh, of the comments and the uh, almost universal, almost universal uh, statement that they're in support. Having said that, my global thoughts are I personally never had the thought that we would not participate in this. So I basically narrowed it down uh, thinking that in order to move ahead, we need to uh, and this is actually premature to what Mr. Carter might say, but I think if we need $3 million annual to uh, cash flow this project, my thought would be that we look at the overall areas or possibilities for paying for it, and I thought that we should have perhaps, and, and, and these are just projections, they don't have to be exact. And, uh, but anyway, a million dollars for parking, that may be excessive, but anyway, we could, those are a million dollars for occupancy tax. And I, I know you've broached that and a million dollars from the municipal service district aspect for taxes. Some type of a division is what we're trying to explore, yes. Okay, so with having said that, I would say, let's go with it and be done with it. Okay. We don't... Yeah, we still have to see all the financial analysis that Mr. Yeah, Parker I mean, even what but... Susan just brought out, mm -hmm. these are some questions here that- Yes. That, and I, and, to and me, we're working through them. To me, I don't even believe the core knows half of these issues that are going to surface. Well, we've been, it, we've been having very open dialogue and they've been very helpful in answering our questions. And Mr. Carter will go through that when he's up. <coughs> and then I thought what questions are still outstanding is we have the folks here from the core, so we'll be able to speak with them directly as well. Excellent, excellent. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to uh, address Ms. Dixon's comment first because it brings up a good point in my way of thinking about the town's revenue. Uh, Alderman Grant just in that suggested that we have a $9 million annual revenue, but what he didn't explain clearly is that we have two different funds. We have a, like a 5.7 revenue general fund we call Fund 10. And that fund covers capital improvements like the South End Fire Station. We have formed a capital improvements committee with Alderman Grant, myself, and town staff to look at that. And that's one of the reasons that we have asked the Carter Group to advise us financially on our general fund. Can we put up 
cash? Can we borrow a certain amount of money to, to rebuild a new, not rebuild, to put up a new fire station? So that's a separate issue in my mind from what we're talking about with Fund 10, which is the beach fund. And as been said, that fund brings in about 30, $3 million a year. Mike, Mike, I think so you, my, you meant fund 30. You said fund 30, I'm sorry, fund 30. Fund, <laughs> we, we call it the beach fund, but it's in the books, it's fund 30. Uh, my mistake, misspoke. So I believe that uh, we are probably going to have to experience some sort of tax rate increase if we're going to have enough funds available in fund 30 for shoreline protection and federal project. Okay. Uh, my second point is we keep hearing in, in the comments that a few comments that people said in north versus south. This is the small town of North Topsail Beach. We shouldn't be thinking north versus south. We are a very long, skinny town with a north end and a south end, and about you know one major road between the ocean and the sound. All right, we and people have asked in the comments, well, how much do you spend at the north? Well, we spent eight point one million dollars since two thousand and twelve, the dredge project phase one, and after that erosion rate increased dramatically, the town was really forced to. Uh, protect the dwellings and infrastructure with the sandbag revetment, which we spent about two and a half uh, million dollars on. Okay, so about $8.6 million that spent the North End. We've already covered in detail that 16 to $17 million was spent at the South End, plus if you the phase uh, um, five project, plus you add the 1.6 million state grant that we got from the state of North Carolina as part of the grant to Topsail Island for hurricane relief, we spent $18.6 million at the south end. So the people that are saying north and south, all the money is going to the north, it's actually opposite. Twice as much of our funds have gone to the south as to the north. But my point here is, what about the people in the center part of the town, if we have the central part of the town? Okay, they have been in the Cobra zone ever since the town has been a town, and that has limited the amount of, of um, funds that we can spend on beach nourishment versus dune restoration in that area. Uh, and we will be doing the, the truck haul as Fran is going to explain in his report in a few minutes. So finally, the people in the center part of town are gonna see uh, improvement in, 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 in their beach. In the dune, but right? in the dune, excuse me, I don't want to say beach. Beach we walk <laughs> on, that's the berm and the Army Corps lingo and the dune. So the beach is really the dune and the berm to the public is the beach, but to the Army Corps, the dune, and then the berm, which is what we think of as the beach that we walk on. Okay, so my, my yeah, point here dune. is that um, <laughs> Lost my train thought, I'm sorry. Um, my point is that you've heard about this idea of municipal service district and the people that benefit from the project should pay the most for the project. And my whole point of this dialogue is that we are a small town we need to work together as a small town. At certain times, my tax money is going to benefit the people at the other end of the town, and other times, their tax money is going to benefit me. So my position is going, going to be going ahead is that if we have to raise taxes, it's going to be town townwide. That's going to be my position going forward. OK, last point I wanted to make. Why does this project become so expensive from um, what it started out to be? And um, Alderman Grant said, well, we did phase five for $16 million. Why is it gonna cost us 
you know, uh, millions more to do it with the Army Corps. There's two reasons. Number one is that the federal project will require an ocean certified dredge. There are only five companies, dredge companies in the United States with ocean certified dredges. By US law, only a US company can do dredge work on the coast of the United States. Therefore, it has to be a dredge from one of those five companies. But you can imagine with the whole coast of Florida, whole coast of Florida, the Gulf Coast and all the East Coast, there's a tremendous demand on those ocean dredges. So it's a matter of supply and demand. And the other reason that the project is so much more expensive is because the federal project will fill the beach profile with four and a half times more sand than we used in phase five. So think about a pile of sand that's 35 cubic yards big, let's say like three dump trucks versus one that's 153 cubic yards of sand, which you know would be about uh, four and a half times more sand. So that's why the, pro the cost of the project has gone up so much. So those are my comments, Mayor. Okay. Well, I appreciate everybody being able to do that. I appreciate those listening online and allowing us to be able to, to walk through that. I just thought it was important for us to be able to recognize everybody that had sent feedback <coughs> into us. So with that, we will move on to the public presentation and hearing section. And first on board would be Mr. Cranway with an update for uh, as our coastal engineer. Hi. There he is. Hey, Brian. Hello. For the uh, update today, I'll make it quick. Uh, we got the bids back August 11th for the, the truck haul on the Northern shoreline. Uh, the base bid was for 205,000 cubic yards. And it runs you know, from where the, the truck haul ended last uh, season. And it goes up to the Topsail Reef Villas. Uh, we got good, good bids. We got five bids. And four of the bids were less than $30 a cubic yard per unit, unit price. And the lowest bid was uh, CM Mitchell, and they had a, a bid just under $28 a cubic yard uh, in placement, which is very good compared to last, uh, the last, the, the southern shoreline truck haul was about 30 or $31 a cubic yard. So it's even better this time. And uh, that was quite good, except there, there it was the, the winning bidder had a math error in their form that they handed in. And with the math error, they either won by $190,000 about approximately, or they either won by $100,000. So the math error did, did not move them out of first place either way. But we're still I'm working with the attorney, Brian, uh, to try to resolve that with uh, CM Mitchell and, and Brian has more information about that. And I think he'd like to keep that, uh, you know, he will fill you in on that later. Uh, besides that, the Florence permit modification to, to get to do the project here that's starting mid-November is moving along. And as uh, the town manager mentioned, we, we can try to bring in the, uh, the Dorian, the Dorian damages, we're going to try to bring in those, there, there are a lot less in terms of volume, it's a lot less. And so we could probably accommodate the Dorian losses with this Lawrence truck haul. Uh, and then this is all that category B truck haul between phases, you know, shoreline phases two through four. Uh, the category G project, and that is, you know, the section of shoreline that everyone's been talking about, that's the section of shoreline uh, that the, the core is proposing to, you know, include in that 50 year project. The category G project for Florence is, uh, we can, we, we do, we can go offshore, but with now with the unit prices for the truck hauls being less than $30 a cubic yard, there is a potential where we could truck haul that material. Uh, we could truck haul 600,000 cubic yards of material. 
at, at kind of almost a, a similar price as we could with the offshore bar area because as, as was mentioned earlier, the you know, $4 million mobilization demobilization fee for an offshore dredge uh, and that's typical, but a lot of times when we do those FEMA projects, it's pretty much well known that a mold demo is. Uh, so I, I could maybe do, I could do like a little uh, memo with some pros and cons of either continuing forward with that offshore bar area, or we could try to think about uh, truck hauling that 607,000 cubic yards. And that, that's kind of where we are. And Fran, the 600,000 cubic yards that you're talking about trucking in, I believe you're talking about that being in the 234 Cobra zone area. Is that correct? No, that would be, that would actually be the phase five area. Oh, that's the phase five area. Yes. Okay. So what, does the board have any questions? Do we want to see some cost comparisons? Um, and this is FEMA reimbursed, correct, Fran? Correct. It's, 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 yes. This is all. So it's not necessarily just cost. It would be timing as well. Then. Can I ask a question? When he said FEMA reimbursed, is that there's a cap? There's a number? Is it, Fran, is it, if it costs 10 million, we get it back? If it costs 2 million, we get it back? How does that work? And also, do we have to advance the money? Okay. Because that's a lot of money to, I uh, mean, Mr. Carter could talk about that, figuring out how to fund that up front. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do with the FEMA project. Yeah, bridge loans. Uh, so FEMA, yes. Uh, FEMA has two different options in terms of uh, payment. And uh, one, will they, they, the, the typical one is whatever the cost is, whether it's a $10 million project or $5 million project, they will pay 75% of that. And the state is, tip, is historically picked up the, the remaining 25% and that I can, uh, maybe Mr. Gilbride or, or, or someone else can, can confirm that. Uh, the second question, what was the second question was. Uh, is there a cap? Is it a, you said it, uh, so it is, but it is, Fran, what you're saying is it is what it is. It is what it is, but actually there is a, an alternate payment method that FEMA can say, well, FEMA will can say, all right, your, uh, your estimate says the project's 18 million, we will give you 18 million. The FEMA does require you to pay first and then they'll pay you back. And those payback times, as Mr. Gilbride could probably tell you, it, it, it can be a year or two before you, can, you get paid back. But I think with some of our previous projects, we didn't have to pay the full, not in, we were making payments and getting reimbursed and making payments. And I think Caitlin can like construction. speak to that. Yeah, no, we didn't have no. to. It wasn't like a loan per se. It was more when the invoices would come in, we would pay them, then we would submit them monthly to FEMA for reimbursement. So it was a monthly reimbursement up to that 75% cap, where then it, once the project is completed, then it goes into the final inspection realm and then after it's completed you get that 25 percent back from the state and what's the lag between when we're putting money out i mean what i just did the math it was just millions of dollars right uh, let, me, let me interject here uh, because i've talked quick straight on about this for, for the hurricane for the hurricane matthew the truck haul project when we, we paid those invoices and there were some pretty big checks that uh, were, were uh, sent to st wooden for the truck haul and we were getting the, the reimbursement back within two months, right? Okay. Two months, two months. So, and what we were, and, and excuse me, what we were, how we were paying that was we were able to use the, the uh, sinking USDA fund. sinking fund to pay the invoice and then FEMA reimburses so that we maintain that sinking fund balance that we require to. But if we're looking just at the math, it's basically here in the it's the comparable thing of having construction work in progress. So if, it, if you're saying there's a two month lag, then we're going to have, it's going to be working capital tied up during that period. Of time. Well, it's not working the capital because we can't use the sinking fund for anything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So that one is just as long as that's big enough. That's yeah, not the Okay. 
Anything else, Fran? Uh, no, I, I have no updates on the, uh, the, the kind of the, the terminal groin project. Uh, I'm not sure if the town has any further coordination with that. Okay. <clears throat> any additional questions for Fran? Thank you so much, Fran. We appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. We got both of those. All right, so then the next one on the list would be Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter, are you out there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. I thought I was later in the agenda, so uh, sorry. No, you're right now. You're right. <laughs> and just for the board's um, knowledge, what I had asked Mr. Carter to do, because we've had him in several meetings this week, is really just to come online tonight and be able to fill you in on the, the questions that he's gotten responses to so far, his thoughts on our progress, um, next steps, and it's not a presentation, it's just going to be a discussion. Thank you, Myra. Um, well, first of all, let me say that we've been working with the manager and the finance director to specifically look at the beach fund, its history of collection of revenues, uh, its current due froms from FEMA, which are fairly significant, and trying to get ourselves to figure out the fund balance position, where it sits, how liquid the fund balance position is, and then build towards a determination in the model uh, to determine how rapidly we can pay off the USDA loan. I think as the board knows, we have an agreement with the local government commission that requires that once a $5 million fund balance is achieved in the beach fund, any excess must be used to pay off the USDA loan. And when we did the USDA loan and did the agreement with the local government commission, it was, it was the, the then models projections that this would occur in 10 or 11 years. And so we're going to look at the model again, look at the historical trends and the future ones to determine whether or not we're going to meet that goal. And when that essentially is done, we'll be in a position to take the model and where we are with respect to the federal project, other projects that we're looking at from the general fund, uh, because um, Mr. Mayor Pro Tempore, you're right, there's projects to be done in multiple funds. And so we're in the middle of that process. I, I will say for the board's benefit, once the USDA loan money is retired, then we will have the three or so million, hopefully a bit larger, available then to pay towards, at least in the case that we're discussing tonight, the, the federal project. And so we're in something of a, um, a four or five year period of wanting to get the USDA loan off, paid off. And then when that is done, all of the funds that are currently inside the beach fund will be freed up for payments against whatever projects y'all determine that are gonna happen out of the beach fund, as an example, the federal project. So we're really, we really have sort of a four or five year period that we're working with. Mayor, did you have a question? I, I heard you say something. Uh, Alderman Grant had a question. Yeah, just a question. Just, I'm, I'm just looking at the math. When you're talking about the $3 million that would be freed up, you're not talking about annual $3 million. You're talking about the $3 million that we have in that fund, correct? It's not free, It's not freeing up $3 million per year. Uh, approximately, yes. Approximately, it is. But we're only paying millions a year. Well, that's why we're, uh, there will be savings ultimately. Now, now we are still... Uh, we have some due twos from FEMA, which have drawn down our cash balances. But essentially, the whole point was once once we paid the, the debt service uh, and met a $5 million fund balance level, that's why in every year, what is excess to that fund was to pay off the USDA loan. 
That's why a 30 year old loan, year old loan was projected to be paid off in 10 or 11 years. Okay, so and I'm, I'm just trying to understand the math. We owe about 14 million right now. Correct. So, okay, let's call it 15 just to make my math easy. If we pay that off in five years, that's three million a year, right? We're showing revenues in that fund right now of about three million a year. Well, well, let, let me no. explain. Right. Well, let me say this too. Uh, applied against that owing that we have to the federal government is the reserve fund. And once we are ready to pay off the loan, immediately that reserve fund will reduce the amount of outstanding. So the reserve fund, which is four or five-ish, as I'm remembering, Caitlin, correct me, that will immediately go to the payoff. And so the amount that we have to come up with out of annual revenues is not the full amount. The reserve will reduce the amount we pay because it will be, be applied to repay the federal government, the USDA. So if you pay it off in three, in four years, it's still three million bucks a year based. Give or, it's a little lesser, right? That's what you're talking about. The free it up is what you're saying is, if you take a look at all the beach fund revenues we have now, which is about $3 million, mm -hmm. once we wipe out the million plus that we're paying per year, Mm -hmm. Plus, we've got the five sitting there, four plus sitting there, basically just holding on to it as, as a reserve against the loan. So when you're talking, I'm, I'm just saying when I'm looking at it freeing up $3 million a year for the project, that would assume that all of the beach revenue would go to this project, right? Uh, which project are you speaking of, Alderman? When we're talking, the big project we're talking about. The, I'm just, the, other, when I look at the budgets, and again, look, you're the expert on this, but I'm looking at the budgets that we have. We have a certain amount of money coming in, and that really hasn't gone up very much. We pay this off, it frees up the payments that we've got, and the cash that we're having, we're holding as collateral for that, right? So when you're talking about, I mean, when, I, when you use $3 million being freed up, when I look at the budgets and the revenue that we've got at the beach fund, that's 100% of the money we've got coming in in the beach fund. Yeah, in approximately four or five years, based upon the projections that we're going to make once we finish the financial analysis with Caitlin, basically because we're paying approximately 900000 a year for the next four or five years, that is three or four million. We have four or more million in the reserve. So eight of the 14 will be gone from those payments in the next four years, and the remainder should come based upon our uh, forecast when we get all our numbers straight with the manager and with Caitlin, then that is where the money would come to pay off the USDA so that hopefully in four or five years, there is no encumbrance against the current $3 million in revenues inside the beach fund. Okay. And, and like I was saying, that we're, we're going to be doing other beach projects besides this one during that period of time. That, that's the only point that I'm making. But well, I, it's, it's fine to free up the money coming out of this. Well, my point that I don't think you can, you can make the leap from we're freeing up $3 million. Now we got $3 million to pay for the project. Well, I, I, think you're, I think you're jumping ahead, Alderman Brett, because we've also talked with Mr. Carter about different ways to bring in more money. That was my point. Nobody is saying that's, that that's, we don't need additional revenue to accomplish everything we need to do. That's, the, that's the point I'm trying to make. I, the problem I've got is when somebody hears we're freeing up $3 million and they've also heard that it's $3 million this project, they're like, well, we're there. And the answer is, we're not there. We're not there yet. Right. Well, Still well, the other, that's the only point that I was trying to make. Right, right. Well, the other issue, and I've spoken to the manager about this, the other issue is, is we really have to work out the construction time period and all of the other timing factors to determine when essentially the North the North Topsail Beach project would be done by the Corps and essentially when our debt service to them would start. That's obviously not going to be right now. So that is at some point in the future. That's the other thing where we essentially, uh, Alderman, we essentially, and I think I said it earlier, but it didn't come off right. We have a four or five year stub period where all of the money is presently dedicated to try to get us out. Well, not to try, to get us paid off on the USDA. We'll only have that 3 million once we make it past that four slash five year period. Now the question is, where in that four to five year period do our debt service payments to the Corps of Engineers begin? So we've got to look at not only the cash flows, 
but when do the debt when does the debt service begin and all of that and and that is data that we don't yet know okay that's fair mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad you yeah, brought that up. I, 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 was, right, I was just concerned about the fact that we we're talking about three and three, and people are going to look at that and say, "No, well, that already paid for the project." And I think the answer is no. Okay, that that's not the case. So go ahead. Right. right. Well, let me just give you an example. If two years from now, as just an example, our first payment was due to the core, then we got two years where we got to figure out that we've got three million plus three million. I mean, essentially, for a time period, we have double cost. That's exactly okay. That's that was the that's a good example. That was yeah, the point. yeah. I'm I'm sorry, I was confusing. That was not intended. Now that we got to the bottom line, I hope that helps. Yeah. No, it wasn't that. It's just whenever you hear two numbers and they sound like the same number. Exactly. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So we're working through all of that the timing with respect to the start of the payments. I, I do want everyone to know, and I think you do, we have ob an obligation after the 5 million is reached to pay off USDA. That is a written agreement, so we gotta get that done. So once we can really get our timing worked out through our negotiations and conversations with the core on when we really would have to start paying debt service to them, then that will make it easier to determine through the financial model where do we need the new revenues? When do y'all need to start levying them? How can we save them towards these payments? And that's what we're trying to work through, okay? All right, good. Well, let me go over, Mayor and I'll do this fairly quickly because some of this has been discussed. I, I just, I felt so good about our meeting on Tuesday with the core. It was our first conversation with them since we started the work with you. I just felt it was a very open, and interactive. And uh, I was just very impressed with how it went and how open and how willing to talk about how we get this done occurred. Now, I do want to talk about a few business points that are still out there that we're considering that I personally think, and I would I guess that you do, think are important as well. Um, first and foremost, and we learned this, and if I make a mistake, the core is there and can correct us. The use of a financing tool by the core uh, as an extension to a unit of local government, in this case, case to MTB and to Surf City, is not common. It's very rare that a loan or financing is done. In fact, in most cases, the local governmental share is put up in cash because the projects are much smaller than the ones we're talking about now. And so the use of a federal financing is rare and therefore is going to require a good deal of discussion so that we all understand what the rules are and how we all um, match all of that to the state statutes that we have to observe when you borrow money, just like any unit of local government borrows money in the state of North Carolina. So I think that was interesting to learn. Number two, something that I learned, and here again, if I'm wrong, correct me. Um, the use of a PPA with two partners is rare. PPAs are typically executed between one governmental entity and, and the Corps of Engineers. And so our circumstance where this project is comprised of two units of local government together with um, the Corps is rare. And that's what brings about the whole, am I speaking too loudly, Mayor, by the way? You're good. You're good. I'm good, okay, good. Well, my computer's a little far away. And if I'm too dark, tell me. At my age, <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like a lot of light on me. So anyway, <laughs> so, so basically that's what brings about the joint and several clause that's within the current PPA. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, right now, there are, we are going through and going to have more uh, discussion about the specifics on the federal government financing. How does it work? How is it terminated? Um, things of that nature. And we began that discussion on the first call, but that will have to be um, moved forward as we go forward and ultimately end up with a PPA that contains all the necessary um, information and business points. Um, now, 
I'm just going to say this and I don't want to create any concerns other than I'm just going to say if we can split the PPA, if there were two PPAs in place here, it eliminates a great deal of the issues that are currently under discussion. Because and Carter, I did feel that on that call, um, and Mr. Ease was on that call as well, that that was the first time I think that we really got to the bottom of what some of the, the joint PPA financing issues are for us as a town. Joint as a, several liability. Well, it, the yeah. joint and several liability, it was um, North Tuffle Beach possibly showing that we owe a loan of 41 million instead of, you know, 17 million. I think that that was great dialogue that we had. And I think that we need to continue down that path, but I didn't get the impression that that was not a potential possibility. That is not a possibility. I separate. got the impression from the attorney that was on the call that he didn't say that it wasn't a possibility. He said it would be a delay in the project. Mr. Eats, was I wrong? I, I don't, I remember the discussion coming up. I don't, I don't remember it being a hard no. There was no, there was no analysis on the books that shows that the surf sitting north tops of each portions of this federal project are incrementally justified in stand alone. So that being the case, we need both signatures on the project partnership agreement or one to, one option is out there is for and because they're not here, I'll, I'll use Surf City. It's just an example. I'm not proposing. But if one town, if Surf City said, all right, we're going to be the sole signatory, then they could they could sign right. for the entire project and then have a side agreement or a local agreement between the two towns. We would then deal with Surf City as the sole signatory on the project partnership agreement. I will certainly commit, uh, Mayor, to confirming for you that two PPAs is completely not a not that, an option. I think that, we that do, was my I think that we do need to confirm that because again, as um, Mr. Carter pointed out, that may not be acceptable to the LGC because then that would be a non-starter for us too. We still, even though we're able to take a loan from the federal government, we still have to explain ourselves to the LGC what is our plan, what's our payback period, and hey, we've got this project out there too. So I understand that it's problematic or causes delay for them, but um, we're just trying to figure out how we'll be able to get something over the finish line. See, I heard what you heard yesterday. You heard the same too. I heard the same thing about about the PPA I hear no. attorney. I didn't hear no, and I, I, I my understanding was he was going to look back into right, the possibility of, of separate PPA. That's what I heard. And just the way in. That, that, that's what I heard too, Mayor. I, 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 so, I absolutely confirmed the justice. I'm just saying this is what's starting. I wouldn't do joint several with my kids. Okay, because it will affect our financing. All right, it'll affect everything. That'll show up on our books. We and that is that's the exact point that Mr. Carter had. I'm sorry, Mr. E. I was going to say, I recall the, the concept of two PPAs coming up, and I don't recall an unequivocal <clears throat> That's all I'm trying to say. No, I no, didn't hear that we could no, do it. I didn't hear that. No. Okay, no. no. We didn't hear yes or no. We just right. heard. Which means possibility. Mm -hmm. True. Well, all right. Didn't tell us that. All right, Mr. Carter, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay, good. Back to that so you will know, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of background. And, and you said it, Mayor, but, but here it goes. And this would be the same for us as it is, is for Surf City. If you were an entity of government, and you do a joint and several with another partner, and anyone ever looks at our outstanding debt, they will count our debt and the debt of our joint and several partner. And so that, that is going to create a lot of concern for those that we would ask to loan us money in the future for fire stations or other kinds of things. And so the whole issue with a joint and several has multiple layers to it, not simply that we could end up on the hook to make another entity's debt service, but that it would prohibit or raise the cost of our future borrowings for other things that the town would do. So it's not really, it's not because we're being hard to deal with, it's so that we can retain our flexibility for the future to meet all of the town's needs. 
and at some point in the future, hopefully obtain a credit rating so that we could offer our financings in a way other than directly with a bank. So, so that's why it's important. I will also make a con com comment to you that joint and several agreements in this state are exceedingly rare. I do not know of one, and I've been doing this for 30 years, of one that's been done for a general municipal government. It's my understanding that on the core projects that they've never had a joint and several because they've never had a multi-partner PPA. And so I'm just saying in hopes that we can really work on trying to make this too, there may be things that we simply can't get changed that are not within our capacities. We're gonna work on those, but it could be made difficult for us. Um, the other thing that I learned is that the federal financing can be less than 30 years. Now, we learned this verbally, and I'm not trying to get ahead of Pamela or any of the other folks that are there. We, we heard it verbally. We're waiting to get written confirmations. But essentially, my understanding is, is we can have an amortization that is not 30 years long, but that will be less than 30 years long. Because as we all know, we certainly want to, wouldn't want to make a 30 year payment for sand that won't be here seven years from now. And so we're looking for a method so that we can do a seven or so year amortization with the federal government on the first loan so that when we do the first renourishment, we'll have back to my freed up number or phrase again, we will have paid off the original loan and have revenues available for us to do the renourishment out of the revenues that we currently have. And so, so I'm really pleased that it looks as though we can do less than a 30 year loan. I would say to you, with respect to, to the renourishments, I learned from the USDA that there is currently no financing mechanism from the, excuse me, from, from the core to do those. And so when we did our first renourishment maintenance project, then we would have to borrow for that from an outside entity. All of that would have to go to the local government commission for approval. And that's why I'm saying to you, if we don't have the first project loan, the federal project loan paid off in the seven years, we will have great difficulty getting the local government commission to approve a loan for us to do the renourishment. So we're trying to plan this in a syncopated way so that we have funds available so that we don't have overlapping debt. Um, looking at my notes, Mayor. Um, there are several other points that I'll say to you, but do them quickly. We, we need to look at the PPA termination clause and some other clauses inside the P PPA. We all have to look at the affordability of this. We talked about that some. There are required financing certificates as part of the process to clo close this loan. And one of them has to deal with affordability or ability of the, or the town's ability to pay the loan or the, the federal financing. We'll have to work through all of that. All of that. And then finally, I did ask um, the core folks on the phone if they could extend the interest rate as fixed for longer than five years. The answer to that was that is not possible under their regulations. They don't have the ability to make this as a unilateral decision. Um, I trust if they did, they would do that, but that is a regulatory thing for them. So I've asked them to provide us with how the calculation works for the uh, interest rate at, that would be reset at the end of the five-year period. So we're working through that as well, okay? Um, and then finally, I would just say we're heavily in the process of looking at the PPA. Uh, it's going to need some changes in terms of added terms inside the PPA because we will need to codify inside that PPA all of the relevant business points, both for the current project, how the future renourishments will work. I'll conclude with this, Mayor. In, in speaking with the core, I was just really pleased to hear that they understand that when the next renourishment project comes up, none of us know where the money's coming from. Certainly the federal government does not have a promise for its appropriation. And we'll have to look in seven years as to where our source of funds all are 
although we're going to be good planners and seek to provide that money when the renourishment maintenance project occurs. And so I think bottom line is we're ready to move forward uh, in, in diligent work with the Corps to try to get the PPA to a point where it would codify all of the business and other legal points that are necessary. And then it could be brought back to you guys for final consideration. And we're hopeful by this, that same time, uh, we're going to have our financial analysis done that will look at where we are now, how we cover that stub period that I mentioned to you earlier before the U USDA loan gets paid off and all of that. Okay. Just one quick question. Well, I think what we'll do is let me let me finish and then I was going to go around. Um, it, was the, it was just about the interest rate. Just one quick question. Okay. Well, your turn. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I wanted to just before we start going around and getting off topic, I'd like to talk a little bit about next steps. So it sounds to me like we do unfortunately still have quite a bit to work through before we're going to be able to be prepared or have enough information <clears throat> as a board to make um, a decision on the signature of the PPA, that's not going to happen today. Um, so next steps, do we need to schedule another conference call for this week? Do you have availability, Mr. Carter, with the core? Um, well, I'm available tomorrow, absolutely. And so what we need to do is I can have Laura, Laura, if you wouldn't mind trying to get us all back together for another, for the next set of, because we'd only got through about half of Mr. Carter's questions in our first meeting. And now I would like to, before I go around to the alderman, I'd like to ask both of you, do you have any questions for Mr. Carter? Do you understand the process he's trying to take us through? Yes. And the difficulties that we're having? Any questions? Um, I did appreciate the, I did appreciate, we, we the core appreciate the call. The general piece <laughs> along my days are just a Tuesday, I guess it was. So I did appreciate it. You're right. It's a round up day. And, um, um, we want this project to, we this group wants this project to work mm -hmm. only to work for everybody. So I, I understand y'all are rocking a hard place. Um, and I appreciate your effort to plan for not just this project, but your whole city, all time. So I, I, not, I don't want to have any comments. We're all for the fire station and the police station too. And, and that's something that everybody is room to have. So, um, appreciate that. Um, as, as, as Mr. Carr was talking, um, and I, I don't want to talk to you and something you can, but I think it's probably time that we, the core, um, put the right folks in the room and, and just have a, uh, you know, have, I like to, I like to have a meeting. I like to make sure we prepare for it and put the right folks in the room and invite the towns, both towns, like yeah. to hear discussion to listen and have, have questions. But tomorrow we won't be able to do that. But if you give us time, I don't mean weeks, if you give us time and, and I know Pam is working with team members to answer some of the questions. And I think the biggest issue, I think not just from, well, certainly financing and, <clears throat> and being able to make sure that we've got our additional revenue stream in, in order and the USDA, all that stuff, all mapped out but if there was a way to do two separate ppas i think that there would be a lot of concern removed from the carters as well as this whole board so the issue and mr carr is correct that the uh, finances is rare it came with the supplemental bill that came out in 2018 2019 that was part of the law so in my career i've never seen it happen because it was just not an option well, and but the problem is, and, and we appreciate that very much. But the problem is, it came out right with the law, but then it's not jiving correctly with the rules and regulations we need to follow from a local government commission perspective. So, I'm, just, I'm just saying, when, when you ask when you ask questions, we kind of look like a dog trying to scare the head out, can't answer them all. It's because it's new to us. It's, 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 it's new to us too. So, we, well, the last thing we'll do is, is give you law advice from the board. Oh, um, this is your first new start project too, and what, like 20 years ago? For a long time. Yeah, so, I mean, it's all of them up until then have been re uh, the re 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 so, yeah. so you're kind of you're kind of walking through this too. I'm sure there are not a whole lot of people still there from 20 years ago the last time you did one of those. Hey, <laughs> Come on, Bob, you've been there for that time. I've been there. Hey, she knows that I posted it in the 
Executing a PPA, Roger Partnership Agreement is, um, I look at it from my side, it's, it's a trust, but I, from your side, when you're looking at the next 50 years and report back to your constituents, I can understand your, your, you know, wanting to make sure all the eyes and dogs and peace across. So let's, let's, it's pretty obvious as y'all talking about your work or making decisions tonight, and I told you before. That's not a kiss of death. That's not, you know, we love to we would love to have a decision move forward. Well, we just want to make and sure that we when we make the decision to move forward, we're capable of being positive that we're able to commit to the project. I give you a couple of things I really like when you compare the project that we're altering the bill versus how you made the comment the top to pay six million dollars. Yeah. Top, top to the pay six million dollars for 50 years of right. or the size of the project. You're not comparing apples to apples. Uh, I was just, this one is a 10, 10 mile long project with, and it's based on quality place. So you're going to, you're going to be fair on price. Let's divide the cost and the number of cubic yards that are going on the beach. And that, that, that'd be a more equitable way. And, and look, I don't, I don't dispute that, but you know, understand two things. We get pushback from our constituents for sure. cost, okay? And everything you say is, is a fair statement. But we went in thinking we were buying a Chevy and we ended up with a Mercedes, just in terms of cost. And when you say 50, 50 years, and I know you're trying to be fair, so are we. The reality is it's not 50 years of the space project because renourishment is a multiple of that too. And that's not something we have to take on. And you know, it's like he was talking about, if we can get this down to a seven year financing, then worrying about two years of interest rate pop-ups becomes immaterial to this project, right? It, it's when you start running inflation numbers and you say, you know, and I'm, I'm old enough, you're probably not to remember the Jimmy Carter days, all right? And so, you know, 18% interest drives this thing for all that. It's really old, right? So, all right, yeah. well, let's let's try and just, I think we'll come up. We'll take, we'll take an action item to, we'll, we'll talk on the way back tonight and be ready to try to do And then work. I think if you can get staff to go by tomorrow, they can coordinate on our end and mm -hmm. get our right people in. Yes, I would like to have your city in this as well. We've been trying to. They unlock that for them so they know what um, you know what we're going through and what challenges we have and where we are in the process. Um, and then what I'd like to do is just kind of go around to the board again and see if they have any questions for Mr. Carter that he didn't cover. So I'm actually going to start with Alderman Meyer this time. Do you have any questions? Not at this time. Okay, Mr. Peters, do you have any questions? Uh, all right, Mr. Benson. No. No. Okay, Alderman Meyer. Doug, I, I was. Here as a board member when we went in front of the LGC back in 2012 and then again in 2014. And my question is pertinent to the, the joint PPA. Now I know we're going to have to go back to the LGC again, just like we did the last two times, and go in and you're going to prepare us, and we're going to state our case. And with any luck at all, we're going to walk out of there like we did the last two times with a unanimous approval from the people sitting around the table. This PPA, this joint PPA between the two towns, is, is that gonna be something that is gonna raise eyebrows with the LGC? But without question. Okay. I kind of thought I knew the answer when I asked the question. That, and that's that, what I was trying to say, that's one, that is, that's I would big, say, one of the biggest yeah, have. that's a hurdle that we have to get over because we have an existing loan with the 30 year loan with the USDA uh, that we're, we're going to still have to go through and, 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 and get their approval, even though, even though the feds are loaning us some money, we're well, still going to have to walk that dog. I think the way it was described to us from Mr. Carter is we may not need approval from the LGC on the federal loan. However, they need to know everything we're doing right. because we're there now. Because in the yeah. event that we don't, as I recall from the other day, in the event that we don't go to the LGC, we get the loan, we're all good for now. And then all of a sudden we want to, we want to build a fire station and take out a, maybe another rural development loan from the USDA to do that. Since that's kind of what they're really intended for. We were the, the first, I think, and probably only, only USDA rural development loan for beach nourishment project ever done 
But uh, if we want to go in a few years and get one for, for the fire station, and then we have to go to the LGC again, and it's like, whoa, wait a minute. You didn't tell us about this. <coughs> and uh, and it, we, don't, we don't want to be the kid bringing the report card home. You can see in English right. on that right. you're a mom and dad, and you get to see it. Right. Alderman, I think you're exactly right. Uh, and I do remember you being on all of those, and you've really hung in there over the years. <laughs> I took uh, a two-year break. <laughs> Marines and all. Uh, uh, let, let me say this. We, the, the local government commission, for the first time I ever saw them do it, allowed a 30-year loan for a beach nourishment project. Mm -hmm. And they did that only because we committed that there would be no expenditures for beach other than renourishment of the project that was done by that USDA loan until that USDA loan was paid off. And so I believe, and I'm not your attorney, but I certainly think there are legal and there are um, appropriate obligations. And I believe you have an obligation to say to them, you're looking at another project that will essentially cover the same area that will be in partnership unless we can separate the PPA with another municipal entity. And here's what the agreement looks like. And so I, I think because certainly the first time we go in for a renourishment maintenance and they haven't seen or known of this, if we don't have the cash in the bank and likely we're not going to and are going to take another loan, just as you said, Alderman, they're going to say, we didn't know everything and we should have. Thank you, sir. Alderman Just two quick things that I, I think are just following up on what Mr. Carter said. Anybody looking at joint several liabilities, it's going to be a $41 million loan. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to look like. The second thing is, and I was saying to them, if, if we're able to get a seven year loan, Mr. Carter, you know, frankly, I don't care about having two year stuff beyond the five because we're going to be looking at that. We can also put in financial instruments. You know, we can do hedges, we can do collars around that kind of stuff. It's almost immaterial to me. If we've got five of the seven and we look at Jimmy Carter days, like we just talked about, there's going to be some huge increase in that. You just pay it off early. You know, you do other stuff with it. So that would not concern me. My biggest concern was the renourishment looking at a 30 year obligation and not knowing, you know, how we're ever going to be able to pay that off if we've got the base load. So, I mean, that if we can get that down to a, to a smaller number, that's a much, much better structure mm -hmm. for us. So I believe the follow-ups will be for us to group, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. And we'll Mayor, the Mayor I, I couldn't hear the USDA folks so good because they're away from the um, from the speaker. It's my understanding they're going to go through a thought and a planning process and let us know when we're ready to reassemble and talk again. Is yes, that correct? Sir. They're going to take a look at the outstanding question and issues. The core will, yes, sir. And then they will get back with Mr. Gilbride and Laura, and they will, and those folks will get us back together. Perfect. That's what I thought I heard. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate your time tonight. Well, so are we finished? Uh, Andrew's on with me. So are you finished with us? Yes, we are, sir. Thank you. Since, thank we're, you. Talk yeah. since, we're, since we're talking to people at the beach, I'm thinking about a margarita. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> thank y'all. You should have put the one down the next The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And the one thing I wanted to. Did you want to take five minutes? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to say anything. Yeah. 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 No, honestly, we truly appreciate the, your, your consideration and all the good, good, good discussion and, and certainly appreciate everything that you're wrangling with in terms of, um, you know, trying to make this work. Sure, how you would make it work and, you know, and, and what the steps are. So we will so certainly you can do it. So you just sign for everything. Well, she actually will arrive in that one. So. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm just saying that was something that was that has been mentioned uh, sure. to us. Um, of course, you know, whoever signs that takes on that those responsibilities for the court. 
And again, I, I understand you, you, both towns have an interlocal agreement, mm -hmm. so that's an option. But uh, but regardless, we will do our due diligence and answer the questions that we have in front of us. Uh, we'll try to to get those answers um, developed fairly quickly, and if we can get together next week, That'd be great. Um, I'll lean forward and we'll try to get that on camera. So again, I, we appreciate you know the discussion today, and anything we need any. Uh, additional questions, please feel free to reach back. All right, thank you. All so right, much. Thank, thank you. you. They couldn't hear that, but you read everything else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All the more not He's an absolute guy. Not 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 thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Okay, on the consent agenda, there was a five minute. All right, we're going to take a five minute recess. Time for an eight thirty. Thank you. Uh, we're trying. We'll be there. I'm still moving. Once you get to be twenty nine, you won't pass it. Unless you're in a blue coat. Oh. Unfortunately, this is not working. It's not working, Mr. Peters. Were you able to hear Mr. Carter? No. Okay. Absolutely nothing. Okay. I'll ask Deb. There's no light on this. Is there supposed to be a light on? There is a light on this. So on your side. Yeah. I'll just have to rely on your. Oh, no. <laughs> We are, whatever you call it. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the videos. Yeah. Are safe oh, on YouTube, so you can always go back and watch it. Okay. I'll send the to you. Yeah. We'll give that a try. We'll a lot of happy things. Yeah, yeah, that didn't need to be here. That we don't have to pay for it. The non federal yeah, funds may the principal amount in whole or in part at any time without penalty. Yeah, he did not say that. Oh, whatever. That's one of those. It was a joint tax court. It had actually been scheduled earlier, so it had to be rescheduled, but that was not a good day for it. Kate Winsler is listening, and she is also going to bring the board. The governor's not going to say she said. At least one half of the sheriff's department.
Over. Are we All back? Right. We're back. back. Consent okay. agenda back on the All right. For the third time, I'm going to try and talk about the consent agenda. Sure. The only thing before I ask for approval of the consent agenda, the planning board had made some recommendations that I would like to direct staff to follow up on. It's a little bit premature right now, but what we want to do is when the town hall is back, um, we would like to honor Ocean City with a wall of artwork and really symbolize the historic town, the historic portion of our town that's there. We also want to provide additional support as it relates to the jazz festival. So there's no decisions that need to be made by the alderman tonight, but I did just want you to know that I have asked um, for Ms. Hill and Mr. Gilbride to just continue working through that process for us. All right, so with that, I will ask for approval on the consent agenda. So approved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. Continuing business. Yes, sir. I'm getting there. <laughs> I know All right. So is. under continuing business, which we've added, we're going to give an update on the revetment committee. Thank you, Mayor. The revetment committee met uh, this afternoon. It was probably our most productive meeting we've had in the last two and a half years. The committee is. Uh, accepted the design work by Arundel Engineers, and we will be asking the town manager to follow up with Arundel Engineers to let them know that we are going to accept uh, their design as originally proposed. So that is the next step in the process, and uh, the engineer then will be uh, responsible for developing a uh, con set of rules for a contractor to be able to um, build his design. So uh, it was really a very productive meeting. I hope uh, my fellow uh, colleagues that were on the meeting this afternoon <coughs> would agree as well. And it, just, okay. just for clarification, the committee accepted the design, not the town of the Right. Okay. Okay. That's report. Under new business, um, Ms. Oakley, do you have something on the Osprey HOA request? Yes, ma'am. Um, quick background. Uh, several months ago, I believe at the beginning of the year, um, the HOA approached us saying that they would like to drive their golf carts to the closest beach access. So we looked at that. Um, there were a few concerns. One, um, golf carts being on a road that has a speed limit of 45 miles an hour. Um, and whether or not they could be driving across the bike multi-purpose path and parking their golf carts. Um, the, the speed limit on New River Inlet Road made it a non-starter. Can't be driving on the road or parallel to the road. So um, the gentleman we talked to was Mr. Kevin Finger. Very nice, very understanding and said that they were gonna to continue to explore other options. Um, they've come to us recently, I think uh, just a couple weeks ago, saying they would like to rent or sublease the land that the town already has a lease on. We commonly refer to it as the Jeffreys lot. This would be directly across from their entranceway. Um, and in North Carolina, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, with the speed limit of 45 miles an hour, they can cross the road um, in their golf carts. I was gonna ask if the golf cart is street legal, they can drive where they exactly. want with it right. anyway, right? Correct. Right. Right. So it's up to 35 miles an hour. Up to no. 35. Right. That's the difference. Oh, okay. okay. And they so can cross any highway. Okay. But not 40. Looking at it, they can cross. Yeah, they can cross, can cross any highway. Can't drive it. Can't okay. drive all of it. But okay, well, let's, why don't we let Laura okay. get through the report and then. Okay. Um, so in our lease agreement. Still. Uh, sorry. No, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Um, with our lease agreement, we're not, with Jeffries, we're not allowed the sublease. Um, but the HOA has contacted Jeffries, and their attorneys have issued a letter saying that they would allow, they do want to, initially they said they wanted to approve the sublease, um, and I asked who would be writing it, and then the attorneys took that on and said, we'll write it, and then you all can, can approve. Um, but um, it, the plan, as presented would allow the HOA to drive their golf cart straight across New River Inlet Road. Um, and the one remaining issue was if they were going across the bike path. Um, I've talked to a few different staff members um, and they're welcome to chime in. Um, they don't believe our ordinances prevent them from driving across the bike path, similar to driving across New River Inlet Road. 
wouldn't be allowed to drive down it, um, but to cross would be similar to crossing the river on road. Um, so the big question is um, that strip, we, the town was pursuing or is pursuing expanding that lot for paid parking. So does that take away from paid parking? Um, the initial cost they've offered to pay, the, the town pays a nominal amount for Jeffries. It's basically, um, well, I believe it's, it's uh, basically the underlying tax value. So they're willing to pay for their portion of that tax strip um, if they were taking public parking away and the board wanted to explore them offsetting those costs. That's something we could discuss. Um, but it's the board's decision if you want to, for, to allow the sublease um, and what conditions you're allowed to grant those. Is the portion that they want to sublease already developed as the parking lot? It is not. That, so they would be taking on the expense of yes, ma'am, doing that as well? Yes, ma'am. They would be taking on the expense of the permitting. Um, we've explained they still have to get a camera permit, still have to get a town permit. Um, they'd have to take on the expenses of maintaining the crossover and their golf cart parking. And then my only other concern, um, and then I'm going to turn it over to the board for discussion, is um, if we do it for this one development, you know, we're not in the situation where we can do it for others. They just happen to be across from a Jeffries lot. Yes, ma'am. There's always that concern of precedent. Okay, so just um, yes, on the line. Are we are we doing that now? All right. Here's here's my biggest problem with it. When you sit there on Osprey Drive, and you're you're at the intersection with New River on that road, directly across the street is a big gray house. It's not. It, they can't they can't go straight across mm -hmm. no matter how they slice and dice that lot and improve it they are still going to have to turn right and then turn left they're still going to either have to drive down part of New River Inlet Road or on the shoulder or they're going to have to use the bike path and we know how this is going to end it's going to end with them using the bike path mm -hmm. and that's you know our uh, <clears throat> Our ordinance on golf carts is very clear. It, it doesn't allow them to be driven on New River Inlet Road, and they can't anyway because of the state <coughs> aspect of it, 45 miles per hour. Uh, they can't be driven on anything over 35 uh, speed zone, but the other side of it is our, uh, our ordinance, golf cart ordinance is also very specific about not allowing golf carts to be operated on the bike path. So I don't see how we can geographically get around this thing, even if we were willing to do it. Uh, I don't see how, because the land just doesn't support it. Okay, any other, uh, yes. Uh, the drawing that I'm looking at shows the entrance to Osprey directly across the street from the proposed uh, easement. Is that not the case? I'm trying to bring it up on the- It's a house, the there's a house there. I'll show you. There's a big two-story. Well, it's the house. Looks it's like the house that the bell roof blew off of on one of the hurricanes. It looks like it would be a diagonal, but it would not be going down the down the golf down the greenway. It would be a, still be a diagonal across the greenway. Yeah. That's what. That's I mean, depending that's on what where saying. depending would, on where the property line is. I went and looked at it today, and I'm not sure where the property line is, but it it might be just a a chance to it. But there's a telephone pole there. It's not a straight shot, which is what how it was presented. It's certainly not a straight shot. It may depending end up on, depending on where the corner is. I'm not sure mm -hmm. where the corner is about out. Uh, there. Yes, I'm sorry. Hey, just a just a, I have a real quick question. We're sitting here talking about raising money and doing other things. You also said it's a Jeffries lot, so we're not just giving up a piece of the lot. If we're actually going to expand that and put parking in, yes. we're giving up parking revenue. Yes, I'm right. 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 So I mean, at the same time, we're telling people we're going to do stuff and, and look i'm not against any of this stuff with osprey to say we're basically giving something we're giving up revenue mm -hmm. all right and i have no idea how big this piece is but if it's 30, 20 30 parking feet. spaces right well that's another aspect of it that i was going to mention too um, i can see if they do I mean, just the same time we're telling everybody we might be raising taxes we're telling somebody else we're, we're going to avoid and, and the parking money is something that like right. seven or eight people put in their letters tom okay all the money so so, I see this a little bit differently. I see it that 
Uh, and it does look like it's diagonal, not straight across, but it is diagonal. So you'd be diagonal crossing New River, and you'd be diagonal crossing the, the uh, bike uh, bikeway. But I see this as a win-win situation for the town because that portion that they're talking about would be the extreme north end of the expanded uh, Jeffrey's lot as we've been talking about doing. And we're going to have to have another crossover that's associated with that <coughs> expanded parking lot. And if we can get Osprey to uh, pay the cost of building that crossover, which is going to be at least five to ten thousand dollars, depending on how much uh, construction work they have to do to get it in. And then at some point in the future, when we expand our paid parking, we will already we will already have an access there. So the stipulation that I would propose in accepting the uh, Osprey Homeowner Association proposal is that at some point in the future, they will deed over or they will give us control of that crossover. We will turn it into a camera crossover and they will have to share it with people that are parking in that paid parking lot that's expanded up to the area we're talking about. So I see it as a win-win situation. Over. Okay. Let's look at this picture and let's look at it hard and let's visualize a golf cart there. And, and let's think about how safe that crossing is when it's not straight across and it is at, at, a, at a substantial diagonal and the speed limit right there is 45 miles an hour. It, it, there's a bunch of safety stuff here that to me doesn't add up particularly as congested as that part of New River Road is on the weekends. I mean, I get it, Mike, I get where you're coming from, and I, and I, I appreciate your, your abstract thinking on it, but, but I just, I don't see this as a safe thing. Can we zoom out? Can you make it a little smaller? Yeah, we can still. Yeah, I wanted to show you where the property line was for this, it's right, yeah, it's right there. So it's not going to be Where's the parking line at depth? Uh, it's a diagonal. This is a diagonal, but it's not. This is the, That's the end of Jeffries right there. Yes. Yeah, this is the end of Jeffries, and this is the area that they want to. You're going to have I mean, the, 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 the apron of Osprey is directly across the street. You're sitting out here and you're, right. you're, you're going to have a golf cart go. And you're going to have to come. Right. You're it's here. almost straight across. Yeah. Have we as any precedent anywhere else? Uh, no. For example, Cape yeah. Island? They have their own. They own the lot across the street. And it's okay. straight across. So it's different. There's yeah. a straight yeah. across. Okay. And there's no bike path. Okay. So, um, Ms. Hawk, do what do, do you need direction from us tonight, or is this just a discussion item? Um, we can ask the attorney if um, we need at least staff at least needs direction. If you want to make a decision, that's and the board feels comfortable doing that. And as you had put in the packet that you had some sample motions. Yeah. Suggested motions. Absolutely. Sorry, I have but I would have never tell the board that they had to do anything. No, yes, suggested motions. Just to help. And, and, and I'll make a suggestive okay. motion. Well, I had a comment. If, if, yes. if we're there, yes, and it's along the lines, I think, of uh, Alderman Leonard's yes. comments earlier. As I read the information in the packet, uh, Ms. Oxley, they proposing the sublease would be on the same terms as our master lease. And our lease uh, term is the amount of the yearly um, property tax. I would recommend that you determine how many parking spaces mm -hmm. you're going to lose mm -hmm. here. That's the point. Mm -hmm. uh, index part of the sublease uh, rental to, to the revenue you would generate from paid parking. Uh, that's a valuable. Like that. That's valuable to us if and when paid parking comes into place, and then that could be in addition to them constructing something that's to be utilized by the entire lot. And we're revenue neutral is what you're saying i'm saying we're not losing that money in fact you're 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 assured of a certain portion of the parking revenue you get from the that space because it's in a lease a sublease right and it's assuming it's full year round too so i like that and how how yeah. big is the area that they're wanting it was um uh, there's a picture in here a 35 was... beach truck joanne yes to say something okay um Another thing that Mike mentioned uh, or did not mention, uh, several years ago, when we were actually developing the parking lot, the owner of that one house there 
threatened to sue us mm -hmm. if it were pursued. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. and I believe that's another kind of win-win if they wouldn't probably wouldn't object to having the golf cart few the golf cart there. The other point I wanted to ask really is where is the formal access there now? Uh, I know several years ago, one of the other citizens in Osprey brought before us a board, and that was to switch the uh, uh, crossover that's on down on the other side of the house to uh, to that area which which they're now I think it's wanting. on the other side of 402 death mm -hmm. it is very well uh, I will say I think he did a quite poor job presenting his point and the board turned him down so uh, so they already have a crossover at 402 we think that one is Osprey looks like it there I yeah. believe that's the one they use right now. Yeah, just because they're definitely so anyway, I guess the board at that point in time thought, well, it's it's close enough that people can walk that little extra dog leg to get to the crossover. Just a question for you. You said that they were threatening to sue if we did something. Why, the why if I'm, the right, why if I'm the homeowner, wouldn't I have the same issue with us putting parking next to there and having golf carts there? I mean, I, I would think that would make them more likely to sue us, not less likely. I don't know. I'm not with you, Rick. No. You said that the homeowner had threatened to sue because of some other things related to, like, Osprey and their stuff coming in, right? No, I was parking if we put parking there. Right. They so my point, though, is if you're putting golf carts there, why wouldn't they, I would think they'd be, the guy would be more likely to sue to stop us. Uh, I don't know, but they were upset of the crowded aspect that it would additional. Okay. Other, we don't know what he's going to do. That's the point. So right. does, does, does the board have a thought on well, direction? Yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion to, if you want to repeat what you said again, <laughs> I, I like something that says if we're going to go forward with this, and I'm just saying if we're going forward with it, I mean we are. One is I don't like the precedent of it. But if we if the board said we wanted to go forward with something like this, I think you got to be at least revenue neutral on something like this. You can't just give it away. So are you you tasking the, the attorney to, to draw up the necessary uh, necessary documentations to 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 have the court go back to Osprey and say if we do it this is this is this is the uh, the way it's going to be done or right. or or if there's not a consensus to even go forward with it you know if if, if the answer to the board is let's not do it then let's let's not jerk them around and have them spend money if the answer to the board is we would be willing to consider it under certain parameters and have the town attorney drop those parameters. Okay. No, just ask. I understand. I, I tell you, I, I'm ready to make a motion to deny the request. Okay. Okay. I'll make that motion. We deny the request. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Open for, open for discussion then. I think it sets a bad precedent and I think it's unsafe. Oh. I'm worried about the safety of it. We've got two conversations going on over here. He's about well, I know, but we're deliberating the motion, and maybe that discussion is germane and the attorney needs to be in on it. I don't know. So. Well, I'm consulting the public safety. Oh, I'm, under the safety well, I'm, I'm good with that, but I don't want your discussion over there. I'm thinking maybe there's yeah. some part of your discussion over there that might be relative to what we're to what we're. They deliberating they right now. Are they for or against it? I, I, thought, uh, I, I, I made a motion that we deny the request. All, Alderman uh, Meyer seconded, second. and we're in the discussion phase sure. now. And my my only point is, uh, I don't think it's a safe move, and I don't like the precedent it says. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't hear. What is I don't believe it's safe, and I don't like the precedent that it sets. And you know, the final comment that I didn't make before is we've got problems with golf carts all over the town right now. And the way they're being operated uh, versus the way our our statute and our ordinance uh, stipulates that they should be operated, and uh, and this is only going to make it worse. And I'm really worried about the safety of people crossing right there, uh, that that close to those parking lots, and the amount of traffic, 
Any hey, Madam Speaker there. Is there possibly a simpler solution <clears throat> where, since we already have, you know, people speeding down this highway right where Jeffrey's lot is and half of those cars are sticking out of the lot anyway, yeah. what if we just reduce that speed limit to 35 there? Well, right and then now, if they have a street wise golf cart, they can drive to the beach. Well, right now, right now we've got a motion on the table. Understood. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm, I, I get where you're going and now what we're going to kind of do is maybe, 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 maybe bend the rules. So maybe this will all work out. And I just think it's a bad idea. Okay. Well then um, let's take a vote on Alderman. Well, um, we've got um, more discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm going to uh, speak uh, against the motion because of the, the reasons I gave uh, Early is a win-win situation. It solves the problem for the homeowners that they've been dealing with for many, many years. This is the best answer they've come up with. It's better than what they have been faced with in the past. It will help the town in terms of revenue neutral or uh, asking them to cover paid lost paid parking spaces. Plus, if we are able to uh, uh, expand that parking lot and we would basically be saving the cost of putting a cross over there because that would be part of the conditions of the approval to get the uh, homeowners to pay for the cross over, but we would eventually take um, over maintenance of it. So those are my comments. Any other discussion? I had one other oh, thing. I, I, yeah, okay. the, um, the area at Osprey, their entrance, where whatever it looks like there's some space there why don't they put their own parking lot in for their golf carts and walk across the street <coughs> doesn't seem like a big deal i mean it looks like there's a lot of room there i'm sure they don't want to do it because it's unsightly but well, the, well, right um, now, this part's yeah. not developed yet so um they and that's able... privately owned right there yeah so they're still using this beach access and then we still be running parallel to New River Inlet because we actually talked about this the first time they came because um, I had suggested that they build if if it was um, if the homeowners were open to it a path behind this house and almost circumvent the parallel and come out across and go straight across from their beach access mm -hmm. but they couldn't work that out with the with that homeowner yeah. 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 Alderman Peters did you have another well I, I, I would simply assert that the safety is already, I mean, they're, they're having to cross it physically walking and then dog leg down to the other, to the uh, other, the beach access where it is there. That's very unsafe, I would imagine. And uh, so you got, which is the, the most safe is what we should be dealing with, I would think, really, instead of which is worse. Yeah. Okay, do we want to take a vote? Mm -hmm. Clerk, could you call roll? Sure. Alderman Grant? Uh, um, if I say aye, I'm voting for your motion, right? That's correct. Yes. Aye. Okay. With just one quick explanation, that is, if we develop the park plan and we want to look at it again, it's just, I don't, I don't like this, and I, you know, and I can tell you from a personal standpoint, I wish the speed limit was 35 anyway mm -hmm. during that strip. So if we go to something like that, then I would reconsider. But right now, I'd find both high. Sorry. Alderman Leonard? Aye. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem? Nay. Alderman Peters? Nay. Alderman Meyer? Aye. Okay, so motion passes. Yes, ma'am. Is this something we could ultimately talk to further on? Sure. And, uh, be happy to if the board directs yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should be a closed uh, issue. Well, I think that, is. I mean, this motion has passed. Now, I'm sure that the homeowners will still want to have some additional dialogue and sure. see if we can come up with something yeah. that works. Maybe we should I, uh, send this to the planning board. Well, I would still like to go back to the question I had raised, um, Alderman Leonard, while I uh, apologize for not letting you get through your, your motion. but. It is very dangerous in that area anyway. Is there any harm to possibly reducing that speed limit to 35? Because then they could possibly drive their golf carts over to their access that they already have. All right. Can, can we just do that or is it a state? I don't know, I'm asking. You can ask. 
you can ask the state to reduce it. And one of the things when I first got here, I was like, I don't know why we don't have it 35 all the way up there, except the people that live up there said, because it takes me so long to get down here yeah. now. Yeah. So I know, but it is pretty dangerous in that area. But they fly through there. But in, and they do, and we have to watch it. But the 45 miles an hour is pretty fast because when you're doing a 45 miles an hour speed, you really get to do 50 then. You're going to go over 45. <laughs> Not in this town. Not with the long end we got. Mayor, I recommend that the matter, since it not only pertains to the Jeffries law, there's public safety uh, issues. Uh, I, I do rec recommend that the board send it to the planning board to try to come up with a more of a global for that area situation, particularly if we're talking about speed limit changes. That way they can get police and buyers input as well. Absolutely. And, and certainly the Osprey Homeowners Association would be able to give their input. Absolutely. I like that. Okay, so do, and if there were, that doesn't take a motion. I think, no, if there's a direction. Okay, addressing the public safety issue, I'd like to remind everyone that when the county access area was open, when the park was open, there were 35 mile an hour speed limit signs on either end of that area. So we'd only be extending the 35 mile an hour speed limit about five houses south. Uh, to mm -hmm. where right. that Osprey is. So in terms of congestion in that area, I think we should consider extending that 35 mile an hour zone. Most people were not abiding by that when it, those signs were there, but after Hurricane Florence, the signs were lost and, and the parks were closed and access was closed. So 45 was the normal speed, but now that the park is open and we're going to have hopefully the county access open maybe next year. We should extend that 35 mile an hour speed limit zone for that section of the road where there is congestion. We can come back and revisit this request so, later. Would Just somebody one like there actually is a 35 mile mm -hmm. coming the other way because yeah. my wife makes me slow down there every is. time because yeah. of the police. I do the same thing. Yeah. So is there, would somebody like to make a motion? Yeah, we don't mention that. that we just, need yeah, to do a formal speech. direct? If there's a consensus that we take a lot of speed, okay. I think it's correct. So is there a consensus to allow this to go to the planning board? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Wait, one, one other thing that that 35 mile an hour sign you're talking about is a yellow sign. Yes. That's, not, that's not a regulatory sign. That's yeah. a suggested speed limit. Oh, thanks. That's good to know. <laughs> Painted a different color. <laughs> yeah. Now the 35 <laughs> Up further is up further. Right. My wife's saying, so now I don't have it to slow down. Right. Okay, so the next item would be the attorney's report. Uh, we have an uh, item discussed in closed session, so I don't have a report at this okay. point. Um, the mayor's report, I think that we personally have all um, been very engaged in um, the planning with the Carter Group as well as the federal project discussions that have been going back and forth. I don't have any additional items to report at this time. So I'm going to go around for the Alderman's report and I'll start with Alderman Grant. Uh, nothing there, thank you. Okay. Alderman Leonard. Yeah, uh, last Thursday, a week ago today, we hosted, uh, the town hosted uh, Congressman uh, Rouser and Congressman Murphy. Now we met down there at uh, the South End Fire Station and toured them to, to our beach crossover at 2nd Street, uh, where we, uh, we showed them. I briefed them on the way over on, on our issues with COBRA. Both of them had already heard that uh, during their uh, virtual meeting to Washington back in July. But we were able to actually physically take them out across the crossover and stand on the beach and point, <coughs> point to the left and say, this is federal, not COBRA. And this is Cobra, and there are no differences between the two, and, and they understood it. And uh, we went from there down to Surf City, and Surf City showed them some stuff. We went down and saw the uh, the new beach down in uh, Topsail Beach. But then on the way back, uh, the three of us had uh, all the way back to fire station. The only ones left in the bus were uh, uh, Congressman Murphy and his uh, his legislative assistant. And uh, so we were able to have a lot of frank discussion with him about about COBRA, about issues with the county, about occupancy taxes. And uh, it was really a good day. We got a lot more done and a lot more uh, a lot more one on one time with our congressman than I think any of us expected to get going in, getting in. It was very productive and uh, it went well. Okay. And that's all I have. Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, I would just like to second Alderman 
Senator's comments, uh, that congressional tour sponsored by the uh, Topsail Island Shore and Protection Commission was very effective. I think we're very fortunate to get those congressmen here in person on our island. And uh, as Alderman Leonard said, you were able to make some very good points uh, with the group. Uh, I'd also like to thank the really thoughtful participation we've had by so many citizens in sending in their comments and suggestions because we need all the kinds of ideas that anybody can come up with to consider how we're going to move forward with the federal project. So uh, I just want to uh, give a shout out to those people who submitted their comments to us. Um, thirdly, I'd like to uh, just talk briefly about Labor Day weekend coming up. I want to commend uh, Public Works Director uh, Andrews for his uh, uh, outstanding uh, preparation of the town. Landscaping looks great. We are ready to receive visitors. The sign has been put up to I noticed warn. That today. When did that go up? Warn, uh, yeah. Yeah. warn our visitors about threat of riptides, the cover and so forth. So I think it's a, a very good plan to get that sign back in place for this weekend because we expect so many visitors and we all will have to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, his work and, and uh, have patience this weekend with the crowds that we expect to come. That's my report. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Peters. I, I want to thank everyone who uh, sent in uh, uh, emails regarding the uh, prospective federal project and I'm amazed at the uh, positive aspect that most people took and uh, so I think that's an, an extremely encouraging aspect that the we have I've never seen it before in this town to have that much uniformity of opinions of what we should do. And it's providing input to us as a board that we certainly need and welcome. So uh, with that, uh, I will say that basically almost the same thing I said last month. I thank the rest of my board members for all of the diligent work that they're doing to help this project along. Thank you. And, and you as well, Mayor. <laughs> and you, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you. And, and Brian as well. Thank you, sir. Alderman Meyer. Um, I just have one thing. Um, I had a citizen come to me with a concern a couple of weeks ago. Um, she was sitting in her living room and her light was on she was up second floor and she looked out and she saw this red light so she went out and there was a drum right there looking at her on her deck and so then they watched and the drone moved from deck to deck anywhere where there was light and um so it, it was reported they called the police, it was reported. They, they knew who it was, they went to their house, but we don't really have any anything we can do about it because we don't have any laws per se that deal with that. Even though it was kind of like a peeping Tom That's situation, yeah. it, evidently it's hard to prove. So um, and she was, she felt very violated with mm -hmm. the whole thing. And um, so I, I talked to the chief here and um, we asked, I asked him if there was any, if we needed an ordinance or anything. And we kind of kicked it back a little bit. And I found one in Nags Head where they have an ordinance and I've shared it with him. And we're gonna kind of work together on that, I guess, yes. on trying to put something together because that's just not right. No, that's not right. <laughs> I mean, it was bad. So, okay, so do you think maybe by next board meeting you can have it in the agenda packet for us to take a look at? If, if we can, we can we'll take, we'll take we'll a look try at it and put something together. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I just I'd like to take a look at it. Please. 
Oh, oh, right. Well, I'll send you the one from the bag. I'll go ahead and send it. Okay, may I have a motion to enter into closed session? So, so move. Well, the motion is based on personnel uh, to preserve the uh, attorney client privilege and what there was a contract issue. Contract. But someone else said there's a second personnel. personnel issue as well. Okay. Two personnel matters and to preserve the attorney client. And, and do you want to let people know that we're going to uh, turn the video off and and, and mute the microphone. Yes. And then whenever you, so if they want to wait, whenever you come back out of closed session, then we'll turn the video back on and we'll unmute the microphone. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I think she just told us. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay, so do we have a second to go into closed session? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Didn't I have a coughing spell last meeting? You did, yeah. You started. You started. It's that COVID. Yeah. 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 So we are out of closed session and um, the one action that was taken is the northern shoreline well, trial call. We didn't take any action. Well, we're directing. But you would you action. like to make a motion concerning the northern shoreline dune truck hall project? Yes. Okay. Um, I think a motion uh, would be in order to award uh, that project to CM Mitchell as the lowest bidder mm -hmm. on the condition that uh, CM Mitchell and the town split the uh, mathematical error referred to by Mr. Way earlier down the middle, which is approximately $45,000. Mm -hmm. um, so the award would be based on CM Mitchell accepting that they would um, eat forty-five thousand dollars essentially, and the town would pay forty-five to to, Bridge to close that close that gap. Yes, ma'am. So, do we have a motion? Second. No, no somebody has to make the motion. Right. I'll make that motion That's as right. as articulated by the town attorney. Thank you. Second. Do we have a second? Yes. Poorly articulated by me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Mayor, I'll contact um, Mr. Mitchell or the company's representative and, and get back with the town man. Thank, Thank you. All right. I'll make motion a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.